the the most common, you know, easily identifiable and and one of the most easily accessible wild edible greens. Um, anybody know what this is? Violet. Awesome. So violet um, grows really abundantly. It, it, it likes good soil for the most part, and it, and it tends to like a little bit of part shade, a full shade, um, so you can kind of see where it's growing. Um, what's so cool about this plant is that like every part of it is edible. Um, the most commonly eaten part is the leaf and the flower, um, and, and you'll and some of y'all may have already seen this, but they produce these little violet colored flowers. Some of them are white. They have different varieties. Um, and, and there's all kinds of cool recipes of, for violet flowers. I've heard of people making violet candies or, you know, uh, violet syrup or, you know, all kinds of different cool things. Um, and the flowers are wonderful. And, you know, you pick a couple of violet flowers and you throw them on a salad and like it turns that salad into this like really fancy dish that the restaurants are charging you $50 for. You know what I mean? Like, they know this, the, the, the good restaurants, they knew like the edible flowers and they're, they're, they're getting people to harvest them and bring them in and they're throwing them on their dishes and, and that's what makes them so fancy, right? Otherwise it's, you know, probably a nice steak, but that's it, you know? So, and good seasoning, not to say, I mean, the chefs know so what they're doing. Poison ivy right there? <laughs> Where? Right there. Uh, that is poison ivy. Okay. So, um, and we can talk about poison ivy in just a minute. Even, um, the even the root is edible? Even the root. Yeah, you probably want to cook it up a little bit. Um, but... Yep. Wow, so, um, you can eat them and you know, the leaf is great raw and it's one of those that you can just like, you can make a whole salad out of violets and you would be fine. Unless your dog pees on them. Then you, then you might want to wash them. Yeah. Then you might want to wash them. So that's right. That's right. So build your immunity. Yeah. So violets, um, anyway, so violets are a great, a great edible. Um, yeah, so let's talk about poison ivy now. Poison ivy is a native, right? And what's cool about poison ivy is that it grows up in disturbed areas. So if you've ever noticed like a, a place where it's been cleared, um, it's just riddled with poison ivy, right? Which I think is really interesting because it comes in these places where, where mostly humans have just like, you know, kind of destroyed a landscape and then left. And then poison ivy comes in and says, all right, humans, you stay out of this for a while. We need to, like, really rebuild this landscape, um, which I think is really cool. Um, of course, I spent a lot of time in the woods, so I didn't want to have to be scared of poison ivy. You know, I didn't want to have to always be looking for it and be like, oh, no, I have to go grab the tech new, you know. So there's a lot of really good uh, videos and, and um, written material about eating uh, the, the small leaves of poison ivy early in the spring. Um, and I've been doing that for a while, and I used to get it pretty bad, and now I, I haven't gotten it since I started doing that. Um, mm -mm, nope. And it's and it's it's similar to the idea of homeopathy. I'm just eating little pieces, and you build up that immunity, just like someone over here said. Um, now I definitely recommend um, like looking up eating poison ivy if you want to get into it because there's some really good videos about it and there's different ways to do it. You can like harvest it with gloves and then put it in capsules and take capsules. The way that I was doing it this spring was I just took, you know, I had kale grown in my garden, so I took a leaf of kale, I went out, and I, I picked, you know, the, and you want to pick it when it's about the size of your pinky nail, right? And I picked the, the poison ivy leaf, put it in the kale, wrapped it up, and just chewed it, and there we go. No ill effects or anything. No, no. Mm -mm. In fact, I felt great. <laughs> that was the kale. <laughs> it's possible it was just the kale. Um, but it's just really nice because, you know, I don't, I don't feel like, you know, and now if I get into a patch of it, I'm still going to go in and, and wash with cold water. Do not wash with hot water. You want to wash with cold water if you ever get into poison ivy because it closes your pores um, and doesn't allow it to spread. Um, so I still will wash up, you know, um, also because I don't want to touch other people and spread it. But yeah, but I, I actually was doing a bunch of work a couple of weekends ago and, and I was definitely, my, everything was in poison ivy and I didn't have any issues, so. So I recommend it if, if you plan to spend a lot of time in the woods and don't want to have to be concerned about it. So, you know, um, if you're making a smoothie or a kale soup or something like that and you want to take uh, like a, a leaf and put it in there, that's probably a great way to get it into your body um, because it's so diluted. And that's the idea is you're, you know, you're wanting to take it in a diluted amounts to build up your immunity. So is that for anybody? Because I know someone sure. who is extremely has gotten it in her eyes, her mouth, right. and 
everything, so. Yeah, and so I'm not going to, I'm going to put out a disclaimer that says, like, I'm not going to say, like, yeah, anyone can do this, and you should definitely try it, you know? Um, I just know that myself and many other people I know um, do it on a regular basis, and, 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 the, and a lot of these are people that have had it pretty bad before, and that's why they got into it, because they were like, this is horrible, I hate this, and I want to spend time in the woods, you know? What can I do? And, and found this research um, and, and this information. So, you know, I don't know because um, poison oak doesn't grow around here, and I and so I, I haven't, I don't have a lot of experience with poison oak. Yeah. Interesting. It, it it totally makes sense that you could. I just don't know because I I think it grows more in like the 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 Rocky Mountains and and into the West, and so I spent time there, but not enough to to get acquainted with that plant. So. All right, any questions so far?